Welcome to the tale of one of Mexico's most notorious drug lords, Rafael Caro Quintero. Caro Quintero started out a little town in Sinaloa and worked his way up through the drug trade to become one of the most feared and powerful men in Mexico. His ascent to power, however, was not without dispute, and his fall from grace was equally dramatic. In this video, we will take you through the incredible true story of Caro Quintero's rise to the top of the drug world and his eventual fall from grace. From his early days as marijuana smuggler to his role in the infamous 1985 murder of the DEA agent Enrique Camarena. So without wasting any more time, let's get into it. To fully understand this man, we have to travel back in time to October 3, 1952, when Rafael Caro Quintero, popularly called Rafa, was born. He grew up in a small town called Sinaloa, in Mexico, which is well known for its strong ties to the drug trade. Growing up in a poor family, Caro Quintero had a tough childhood and had to drop out of school at a young age to take up work as a cattle rancher so he could support his family despite his lack of education. He had a natural talent for business and quickly found success in the marijuana trade. His rise to the power began in 1970s when he started smuggling marijuana into the United States. He quickly established himself as a major player in the Sinaloa cartel and began to expand his drug empire. He rose to prominence in the Sinaloa cartel, which was at the forefront of importing massive quantities of cocaine into the United States in the 1970s. He advanced fast through the ranks, becoming one of the cartel's most important figures. He amassed a fortune so great that he decided trading drugs wasn't enough. He owned several plantations of his own that were dedicated to growing and harvesting the plant. And by the age of 29, Sinaloa had its youngest, more powerful and fast becoming most notorious drug dealer in the area. Rafa was renowned for his intelligence, drive and capacity for flexibility. He was an expert at creating connections and he was able to leverage his network to grow his drug enterprise. Like most drug lords, he rapidly gained a reputation as a brutal and ambitious criminal. He had a history of engaging in murder, kidnapping and other forms of extortion. And it looked like he could get away with whatever he wanted until 1985. Things became difficult for Rafa because of the role he played in the murder of the DEA agent Enrique Camarena, which caused a rift between him and other members in the Sinaloa cartel. However, this didn't deter him one bit. Rafa continued to operate and expand his drug empire building an elaborate network of traffickers and officials. Well, sometime in November of 1984, Mexican authorities received anonymous information from one of their spies that Rafa had stashed about 10,000 tons of marijuana at his ranch dubbed El Buffalo in Chihuahua, Mexico. Unlucky for Rafael, the authority found the exact amount of drugs and according to reports, they burned all of it. The drug fund in the ranch were worth over $160 million and that sparked a new flame in Rafa. He began plotting his revenge with other members of the Guadalajara cartel. He knew for a fact that someone close to his cartel had tripped the Mexican authorities, so he ordered to murder whoever was involved in the operation. His desperation led to him ordering the capture, interrogation and eventually the deaths of two innocent men, John Clay Walker, who was a writer, and Albert, who was a dentist. He was able to keep a low profile and avoid law enforcement, but eventually, in 1985, he was finally arrested and convicted of the murder of the agent Camarena and sent to prison. He served 28 years of his 40-year sentence before being released in 2013 due to a technicality in the court process. The release of this notorious drug lord caused an uproar among the US government as they believe that he had not served enough time for his crime. 
The US tried all it could to extradite Rafa, but Mexico denied all their attempts. He still remains a free man, however, his location remains unknown. Rafael Caro Quintero's story is one of the most fascinating and controversial in the history of the drug trade. He went from a poor farmer to one of the most powerful drug traffickers in Mexico, only to see it all fall apart due to his actions and decisions. Rafa committed some of the most extremely inhuman acts of violence while he operated as one of the Mexico's most known drug dealers for close to two decades and at his point he was literally untouchable, not just because of his intelligence or tactics but because according to reports his criminal organization was believed to be in cahoots with the government. After the gruesome murder of Salazar, who was an undercover DEA agent, however, things began to look dim for the drug lord. The United States took some extreme actions to ensure that the Mexican authorities arrest Rafa. In fact, then-President Reagan even considered closing the US-Mexico border to put more pressure on the Mexican government to arrest him. Well, with the help of corrupt Mexican judicial police, chief called Armando Pavan Reyes, whom he bribed with about $300,000, he was able to escape on March 9th, but his joy was short-lived because, about a month later, in April of 1985, he was arrested when he was found in the Mexican authorities hiding in his Costa Rica mansion. He was extradited back to Mexico and a trial ensued. Well, in recent years, following the death of the Guadalajara cartel's apparent, Rafa has remained off of the radar. But in June 2013, shortly before Rafa was released from prison, the US Treasury Department released information that linked him closely with a close association Juan José Esparragosa, popularly known as El Azul, who was allegedly a high-ranking member of the Sinaloa Federation. Now, this goes a long way to prove that Rafa still has some sort of criminal ties to one of the men that many believe are most likely to be successor of the Sinaloa Federation. Well, a little bit about El Azul, according to numerous reports, in the 1990s, he was believed to be a high rank member of the Juarez Cartel, and if that wasn't enough, at the same time, he also acted as a high ranking advisor in the Sinaloa Cartel. This one feat that hasn't been duplicated by another major cartel figure in the history, but that's not all. The US Department also named several companies belonging to Rafa in the vicinity of the Guadalajara in central Mexico, which, according to reports, served as fronts for illicit activities. But right now, it is believed while Rafael Caro Quintero has managed to stay out of the public eye, he has still maintained a strong influence in the drug scene in Mexico, although it is more likely that, that he only launders money for the cartel. His exact whereabouts still remain unknown, and it might serve as a clue to truly understand how much influence he still has in the drug business. Shortly after release from prison, the US made an announcement regarding information leading to his capture, which disagreed with the court's decision to set him free. In fact, they went as far as releasing the red notice alerting Interpol to his status and officially designating him as an international fugitive. And to make matters worse, the Mexican attorney, General Jesus Murillo Caram, said shortly after Rafa's release that the Mexican authorities admit to not knowing his whereabouts. In his words, I quote, We had him in our grasp and then he escaped. Rafa, however, reached out to authorities himself following that announcement in late 2013, in a letter to the Mexican president Enrique Peña Nieto himself, asking him not to bow to the pressure coming from the United States and that he had already served his time so they shouldn't make his family go through more undeserved persecution. Without a doubt, Rafael Caro Quintero's story is one that still rings in the head of many. He went from a poor farmer becoming one of the most powerful drug traffickers in not just Mexico, but in the world. He claimed to the top of his trade, only to see it all fall apart, through so many see him as Robin Hood-like figure who provide of members for his community. His story serves as a reminder that there are consequences 
for one's actions. Despite the fact that Caro Quintero is now a free man, his past and legacy will always follow him, and his history will be remembered as one of the most notorious drug lords in the history of Mexico. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe for more intriguing stories.